What's up, OCBL fam? This is your commissioner, Zico Pepic. I am back with another episode of Pass First, Shoot Later with another awesome special guest, Antoine Tanner from Cool Runnings. Antoine, how you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. I can't complain. Blessed to be here. Uh, blessed to have you, man. Really appreciate you coming on. Um, Antoine, for everybody that I'm sure knows, is our celebrity basketball player within the league. Uh, I have guys asking me like every week, yo, is that that guy? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's him. That's him. Uh, from whatever show you're watching, Coach Carter, One Tree Hill, movie, whatever it is. Yeah, that that's him. That's that guy. <laughs> All <over. laughs> Actually, uh, you know, I, I should probably let everybody know how, how I actually met you because uh, I kind of got sucked into that a little bit too. Um, I played with you in the Legacy League, if you remember. It was the first time we met. Yeah, uh, our buddy John Walker pulled me into that league. You guys already played a couple games, but you guys didn't have a point guard. So John asked me to come play with you guys one night and I get there. And the first guy I meet was Coke. Remember Coke? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Coke. That, that was I, I still don't know if that was his name or his nickname, but th that was what they called him. Coke and Coke was, was no gonna, nonsense. I was gonna bring him to our to our Sunday night. Oh, you we should, man. He's a hell of a player. Hell of a player. Him. He's we a no nonsense kind of guy. Yeah, so I meet him first, you know, he's doesn't talk stuff. That's it. And Antoine comes like a couple minutes before the game. We're warming up. And I'm like, I look over, I'm like, oh shit, that, that's a guy. He's like, yeah, yeah, that's the mother bleeper from that shit ass show. Shut up and play ball, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah, we played our first game together. I found out really quick Antoine could shoot. First game I played with him, he had 12 threes, absolutely lit it up. I was pushing the ball, looking for him every possession. I think he had 40 points the first night I played with him. And uh, that was something that was really interesting to me because you watch these movies with guys that are hooping. You always wonder, like, I wonder if they can actually play. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you can. I know we're both a little older now, and maybe these kids don't see it, but you are one hell of a shooter, man. Uh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. That, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of hours in that gym. Uh, talk about that, because I know you have a pretty extensive basketball history. Uh, talk about where you played and uh, all the things you went through. Uh, well, I played at Chicago King High School. I was in the top 100 as a freshman because it was, wasn't that many, you know, freshmen playing varsity. And especially in Chicago, where it's like basketball legacy, where we got, you know, especially at King, we got two national titles. I got one as a freshman, one as a sophomore, because they moved me up to varsity as a freshman but I didn't really get to play well we I played on tv when we played it was called a clash of the kings so it was uh Khalid Reeves you remember Khalid Reeves he oh, played yeah, yeah. so and they played against us and you know my cousin Marcus Liberty and Johnny <laughs> Selby I'm Sharif like Jamie Brandon my team was like I played with the top point guard in the nation and he averaged like 39 and 10 so I knew I wasn't gonna never see the floor <laughs> especially as a freshman but uh, I remember he had, uh, Jamie had twisted his wrist. And the uh, first game was e ESPN first start showing high school games. And the coach was like, Tanner. I was like, cool. But they called me Drano because that was my nickname. So sub tried to sub me in, took off my snaps, got on the court. They shot a free throw, shot another free throw. They called a timeout. I got subbed in the timeout. <laughs> Never thought of it. So, yeah, yeah, that was the first time. So it counted as a game played, but I didn't play. <laughs> and we won that game though too. But it was a good. It was a really good game. So that was like, that that was cool. I played at King. I got recruited by a lot of big schools. I ended up playing at DePaul University. And um, after I went to Korea, to Tahiti, to man, where else did I go? All over France. Um. And uh, that was it. Now, now just playing the ABA now, but um, stayed overseas for a while. It's kind of lonely, but you know, you go over there, you do your thing, and it, it's kind of cool. You know, I mean, especially to get paid playing basketball, just like, but it's a lot of work, and you got to stay your butt in the gym, and you got to get that that IQ together to play over there, because all those guys over there are really smart. Over here, there's guys that are really athletic and they think they're good just because they're athletic. And you'd be like, oh, my God, he's terrible. Mm -hmm. You call it set play and he don't know where to be. But you just throw the ball at the rim, he'll go dunk it. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm so whole, di whole different ball game. But, yeah, I've, I've been around the game for a long time. So, 
you know, even the coaching, coaching in the Drew League, playing in the Drew League, that, you know, a lot of accolades in the game. So I can't complain. I'm blessed with it. So how did that translate into becoming the, an actor? Well, actually, I got discovered playing basketball to be an actor. I never was an actor. You know, that's the crazy part. So when I first did Sunset Park, um, I got noticed from playing in the Say No Classic by Dave Benezra. Dave Benezra was a, a coach and he was like, yo, they about, to, they about to cast this new movie and they want real basketball players. They don't want to, you know, have just actors who can't play. They want to have like both so they don't have to waste a lot of money on cutting and they want it to be authentic as possible. So I think you should go down and audition for it. And a friend of mine was an actor already and he had an agent. I didn't have no agent. He was like, yo, my people sending me in for that same role, but I can't play no basketball. So I was like, okay, cool. So we ended up going to the tryout. He invited me to the tryout. So I went to the tryout. They was just doing regular little drills, three man weave, just regular little drills that you just do. You know, I knew the drills cause I played, but some of them guys had no clue. They didn't know how to go behind it. The, they had no clue. They was really just actors. So I'm in the thing and he was like, oh, he can actually play. So I get into it at the second. So they had the first audition was at Poinsettia Park. And the second one was in Brentwood at the, this little court that they had at the production offices. And I get into it with who's now like my big brother, uh, Anthony Harris. He was in Blue Chips. Anthony Hall, I'm sorry. Uh, but they call him Chicago. So me and him was like talking. But I was really like competing. Like, it was just basketball to me. I didn't know nothing about the acting portion of it. So me and him get into it at the audition. And he was just like, yo, calm down, man. It's just a movie. And I'm like, man, you sorry as shit. Like, this is basketball. Like, don't come out here if you ain't got no game. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we was just going back and forth. And Danny DeVito and Rhea Perlman, them, they saw it. And they was like, oh, we like that guy. We like that guy. So then next thing you know, my boy was, was telling his agent that, that I went with him. And they called and... Um, and asked about, about me. They was like, yeah, we have this other kid. So she was like, oh, well, I'm gonna see if he'll go back. So I went back, like, okay, I'll go back. So I went back, but they said, this time they want you to read. And I was like, oh, well, I thought I was just gonna get the little hundred dollars a day for being a basketball player on the team. I didn't know I was like going in for a real role. Like I'm not an actor. And then, so I called my granny and I, at my granny rest in peace at the time. And I was like, granny, they want me to come in for it, but I just want the hundred dollars a day. I don't want to have to say nothing. I just want to play basketball. You know what I'm saying? And so she was just like, well, if you feel like you ain't going to get it anyway, then what you got to lose? I was like, damn, that makes sense. So I was like, all right, I'll read it. So I called this girl that I knew. Her name was Becky Drury. And uh, she played basketball at Duarte High School back in the day. But she used to take theater. And so I called her and was like, hey, you're an actress. Would you help me, like, prepare for this audition? And she was like, yeah, I'll help you. So she helped me prepare for it. I had it word for word. Like I studied it like two days and I had it word for word. Cause I didn't know you could use the paper in the audition. So when I got down to the audition, um, I got in the audition and got starstruck. Cause I seen Danny DeVito and Rhea Perman and my granny loves them. I'm like, hey, you the dude from Taxi. And yeah, you was on <laughs> Cheers. Would you sign this? I'm gonna mail it to my granny. That's how old I am. And I was like, I'm gonna mail it. I'm gonna mail the autograph to her. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like, uh, so I ended up um, doing that and uh, and then they was like, okay, now let's read. And I was like, shit. So that starstruck moment lost my focus and I couldn't remember it word for word how I studied it. So I just kind of did it in my own words. So I caught like about six buses to get back home that night because I didn't have a car or nothing. You know, I'm just a broke college student, you know, about, about to go to college. Um, and I was just like, man, so I'm listening to my little Walkman the whole way home on the bus. Like, damn, I messed up. I'm not going to get it. I studied for two days and then I went in there and just messed all the lines up. But I just did it how I would say it. Like it was natural. Yeah. So I get home and my dad was like, hey, some white lady been calling all day talking about no matter what time you get home, call her. Because, you know, back then we had cell phones. We had yeah, landlines. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, she been calling. He's like, man, she done called like six times. She said, it don't matter what time you get home to call her. And I was like, okay. So I called and she was like, congratulations, you booked it. I was like, book what? What does that mean? Like I was totally not an actor. So she was like, um, because I didn't want to read for the role and then lose the $100 a day. 
if you like me for basketball, I'm going to take the hundred. The bird in the hand was better than trying to book a role because, you know, they only going to choose one person. But here yep. you choosing a lot of just, if you telling me I'm good, just give me the basketball. But they was like, no. So they was like, he was so natural. It was so real. And I was like, really? <laughs> I was like, I was like, because <laughs> I did it in my own words. Right? It just kind of like tripped me out that I did it in my own words and they really liked it. So I didn't know that that's what acting was, you know, it was like actually taking the character, not changing the intent and actually being yourself. And that's what made it so fluid. And I didn't know that. But when she told me that I booked it, like I didn't even know how to walk around a set. I didn't know what it was blocking, how to sit over here to say it to the camera. I just did everything natural. And they'd be like, oh, you got to stop that because we can't, we, we, you're saying it, but we can't see you on camera. We need you to say it this way, even though it feels unnatural, but on camera, it looks natural. It was like, oh, so Sunset Park was a learning experience for me. I had never acted in my life, but that was a learning experience for me. But it was basketball. So the basketball portion, when we had to do stunts, that was easy. It was just the, the learning the blocking and to make sure to deliver the lines and to listen to the guy and to understand, you know, so I, 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 that was my class, but it was my first job in the business, professional. And then after that, I was like, damn, people calling me in now. So I must be actually good. So, you know, when, with any basketball player, when you feel like you got some type of weakness, you want to work on it. You know, like, let me work on my left hand because um, I can't shoot left. I can't I can't do that. So I just started working on it. Like, let me work on this. Let me start studying. Let me start getting better at this. If people was actually calling me and I'm actually, you know, but like I said, I had it easy, an easier role than a lot of people because the characters that I played early on in my career were so close to me. I didn't have to change anything. Is when I had to start playing characters that wasn't me was the challenge. So, but I already had my feet kind of wet because I was on set, know how to block and know how to do this. So it was like, I had to change my focus. So it's just, like I said, it's just like basketball. I had to work on something that I wasn't good at. So it was like, let me work on trying to be a doctor. Let me work on how to, even though I talk like this to my homies, that's cool but I can't talk like this on TV if I'm going to be a doctor because nobody will believe that I'm a doctor. If I call, hey, what's up, hot? What's good, my boy? I can't come in there saying that when doctors don't talk like that. You see what I'm saying? So I have to go study a doctor and emulate him. But the crazy part about acting is this. When you play basketball, it's really easy because basketball players, when we, we talk about each other and we have fun, we always emulate somebody else. Like, this dude here, you know how he walk in with his bag and he be having his bag and he gonna say, ooh, ooh, ooh. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so you just actually become somebody that you already know. So it's the same thing. So it was so much easier for me when I like kind of put it together. It was like, oh damn, I would read characters and be like, I know this dude. I think I played with him in Korea. Hey, it was a dude on my team that act exactly like this. So what I would do is I would just act just like him with these words. And that would create a whole nother character. So I was already animated. I was already doing this and I would already have my stuff. And then I was like, okay. So when they say art imitates reality, that's true. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, oh, okay, got it. So I started putting two and two together and then getting some pointers from a few of my, you know, like head, head honchos, my, you know what I'm saying? Like Sam Jackson and Denzel and, you know what I'm saying? And Andre Bauer and, you know, just, Charles Dutton, like, you know what I'm saying? Richard Roundtree, like cats that I worked with before I started learning little stuff from them going, okay, okay. And I would take a little bit from each one of them and make my own style up. And now I'm, you know, that helped me get confident and be professional and, you know, be able to go to the next level in the game. That's awesome, man. I actually love that. I, you never told me this story. So uh, I actually loved hearing that. Um, so who is the guy that you, uh, loved learning from the most of those people you're just talking about because i would i, I would assume listening to samuel jackson teaching yeah, you that yeah. probably would be that'd be yeah, fun that's, that's top tier because i worked with sam jackson back in like 98 on a movie called 187 do you remember that movie you did i was yeah, in that I do. yeah i was in that movie i was one of the classmates i played augie i was one of the classmates when method man was the, the kid that stabbed him you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Stabbed the teacher. And then he moved from New York and came to California to teach. But I was in that classroom. I was one of the kids. Um, and so I used to listen to little stuff that he said on set. Like, I'll be like, man, I got 10 pages to memorize for this audition coming up. And he used to say little stuff. And I'll be like, 
He'd be like, fuck the line, know the scene. And I'm like, what, is that, <laughs> what, that, what does that even mean? Like, you know, like I had no idea what that meant. He was like, you know what it means? He was like, okay, you see a girl in the bar, right? You like her, you want to talk to her. That's the scene, what's the lines? And I was like, oh shit, makes sense. Okay, get it. You know what I'm saying? So, so he was like, okay, you know it. So I never forget it. We was on set and he was like, show me what you read. So I showed him what I read, what I had to audition for. He was reading it with me. Actually, it was a show called Maloney and I ended up booking that show. While we was, you know, I booked it right after I did uh, 187. And so um, he was reading it with me that day on set because we was fucking around. He was reading with me. He said, I'm going to show you something. So he was like, okay, read it. I read it. I gave it to him. He was like, okay, you know it. Let's do it. And I was like, I don't know the lines. Like, I just read it. He was like, okay, well, what's the scene about? And I was like, okay, well, he comes in and then he says this and then the guy says that and then he does this and he does that. And he was like, okay, so you know the fucking scene. So you know the lines. Now, what's the line? Don't tell me you don't know it. And he was so mean. And I was just like, but it clicked what he what he was saying. And I was like, oh, damn. He said, now, overview it, paraphrase it in your head. What is it? And I was like, damn. He said, you just told me everything that happened in the scene, but you just told me that you don't know it either. So I'm not rolling with that. So I was like, okay, well, he said so and so and so. And that's what helped me, that's what helped me like memorize, you know what I'm saying? The stuff like as quickly as I did. So now like I could have a 10 page audition and I knock it out. Like no problem. I could give me, I read it once or twice, put it down, go over it in my head. I kind of know everything. And then I go back and just tighten up the lines. And so now at this point, I'm just listening. I'm living in the scene. So it was like, I was like, oh shit. You know what I'm saying? So he told me that. So just learning that from him was big. And then I, you know, I learned from like Richard Roundtree when I did uh, 413 Hope Street to go with your instincts. Charles Dutton was like, slow it down and make it chew. Denzel said, real actors don't act, they just be. You know what I'm saying? So it all made sense at everything they were saying, but I had to put it towards, I have to correlate everything with what I know. I knew basketball. So I compare everything to basketball. When I got to be on set, I'm early. I'm not late. You know what I'm saying? I'm not sure. I'm showing up ready to play. If I, if I get there right at six o'clock and my game is at six o'clock, I'm not starting. I'll let the other guys go until I get loose and get ready. I'm not ready to, you know what I'm saying? I'm not prepared. So is that's how I approach my auditions. I have to prepare prior, warm, get my warm ups in before, you know what I'm saying? Before we go for, and then I'm going full throttle. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like, I'm in there. So, you know what I'm saying? But once you correlate it with everything, you like, damn, it really just makes sense when you're a ball player. And I think, I think a lot of ball players, that's why you, you see a lot of ball players, they, transition to acting as well see a lot of ball players that you because it, once they could figure out the correlation it's easy for us because we so competitive with ourselves to get better so it's like okay let me do that let me do this let me do that and you put it all together be like okay i'm gonna work on this i'm gonna work on that i'm gonna work on my transitions i'm gonna work on this i'm gonna work on that and everything else just flows so that's how you know just like learning from them guys i just like i said just stole a little piece from what everybody did and and I just made my own, you know, and I got my own hezzy crossover spin move in the acting game. <laughs> That's all it is. So speaking of guys that uh, transition to acting, which of those actors is the best Hooper? The guy that you know is like, if you could, you picking him up for OCBL. That's a ball player that went, that turned into an actor. Hmm. I have to see. Well, I know Nana. Nana could actually play play. Uh, that Nana Boanyo that played in the uh, Coach Carter that played Junior Battle. Uh huh. He can actually play. He played in the Valerino. He didn't play in pro tournaments with me all over. Like he played overseas and everything. Like Nana could actually play, but he's six seven, forty two inch vertical, smart, could shoot the three, could you know over the rim, could post. He do a little bit of everything. So Nana could actually really really play. Um, you see who else could really really play. Quiet is kept. Dwayne Martin could really, really play back in the day. Like Shake was really smart, really, really smart point guard, really smart point guard. I think he had like trials with the Knicks and all of that. So he was like actually oh, wow. really good from, you know, when he did above the rim and all of that. So he didn't actually really play. Um, actors that turn actors. Well, I know Brian McKnight 
Brian McKnight is really good. Like he was really good back in the day. Like a lot of people see the old Brian McKnight like now and oh no, he couldn't play. No, actually Brian would dunk on you. Brian would dunk on you. He would shoot the three. His son was actually really good. I played with a lot of those guys in the uh, E-League. Quite as kept Kevin Hart could play. Yeah, Kevin Hart could play. Kevin yeah. Hart was my championship team in the, in the Entertainment League. Um, who else? Jamie was- Actual kid. actors, actors who weren't hoopers, but played in those movies. Which of those could actually play, if any of them? Uh, some of them could play. But like I said, I'm, that's just a few that's just off the top of my head. I know Dwayne Martin for sure. Rob Brown, that was in Coach Carter. He could actually play because he did find in Forrester before that. Um, Nana was just a ball player, and they picked him up as an actor that I know. Um, I know I know my uh, I know my sisters and a bunch of other ladies are really hoping you say Channing Tatum. They're hoping you bring him. You know, to, to to the league so they can come watch the games. Our crowd will double with all the ladies on the side acting like they're oh, watching Channing, their boys man. play. <laughs> it's so tough to get in contact with Channing right now. And you know what's funny? Channing used to come to my house all the time when we was filming. I used to spend a night. But Channing was like a brand new actor to the game. He never acted before. He just was a beautiful. He had, I used to bag on him and call him the most beautiful man because he was a model. And he and he had won the most beautiful man that year. And he had this little pose with his hat. And he was like, you know, like pose. And I was like the most beautiful man pose. And we all just like mess with him. <laughs> and he used to come stay at my house all the time. And I was like, Channing, you know what's crazy? You're going to blow up off of this movie. He was like, no way, Twan. It's going to be you because like everybody loves your character. Like you're in front of the camera. You're making everybody laugh. You're doing this. And I said, nah, bro, it's going to be you. You're a white dude. You look good. Hollywood is going to accept you. I'm going to get roles, but you're going to get roles, roles. It's going to be told so different for you. And he's like, no, nah, bro, come on. Don't say that. I'm like, nah, I'm just telling you what it is. I know what it is. Sure enough, that dude blew up and is out of here. I haven't talked to Channing in years. I call him. I have to talk to three assistants before I could get a message to him. Like that guy is, you know, that guy is huge, but he don't play basketball like that. Yeah, but, I figured. I figured. I'm just joking around. I was talking about that with my sisters because uh, my sister saw that you know you were playing in the Muslim basketball league before, and this one now, and uh, you know we're friends. When I played with you that first night, I went home and told them, and uh, they loved One Tree Hill, loved your character, loved all those characters, and obviously they're big Channing Tatum fans, so they uh, joked man, around with me James about that. Lafferty like, yeah, tell them to bring him. <laughs> yeah, James Lafferty can actually play. That was in oh, yeah. Tree. yeah, he can play. Yeah. Um, and some of those guys on that set, they could play. They were some real hoopers on One Tree Hill, some real hoopers. Um, you know what, Paul Johansson, that played Dan, that played the dad on uh, yeah. One Tree Yeah, he played in the Canadian national team. Oh, wow, I didn't know that he either. Was a pro. Yeah, he was a pro. Paul. I like when they actually take guys who actually hoop, because you can tell the difference when you're watching on camera. Like sometimes you yeah. watch some some of those shows or movies and you're looking at dudes like going up for a layup and you're like, bro, that, that guy doesn't fucking yeah. do that at all. They it's bad. Long leg. It's not smooth. Yeah. yeah, but that's what. But that's what they wanted to get away from. Yeah. When I booked the movie, they wanted to go. Okay, we want real players, and we can see if we could transition them enough to where they may be is good enough to get over. And that's what they did. It's just like I said, me at that time. I took a liking to it, and said, "Damn, if I'm getting paid to do this, I want to be better at it." So. I already got my foot in the door, which most people was dreaming of being an actor. And I never had those dreams. I just wanted to play ball. You know, that was, I wanted to put my, my original dream was to go play, play pro ball, come back, coach college. I wanted to coach college and be a, a math teacher because, you know, at the time the credentials was you had to teach at the school yeah. that you was going to coach at. So I was either going to do start off in high school and be a math teacher and then move to college, to the college level. That was my ultimate dream to be a division one coach. And, you know, what I'm saying and, and teach math. But I know once I, if I got a division one coach head job, I wouldn't have to teach math at the division one level. But if you went JUCO, then you would have to teach at the school. So it was like the credentials was different. So that's why I was set up to do that. Originally, that's what I wanted to do. And my, my minor was uh, engineering was electrical engineering so but like i said it just you know guy has a funny way of just doing stuff for you and it's that's it that's all 
So one more question about the movie industry before I move on. Um, Coach Carter is actually one of my favorite movies. I absolutely love that movie. I think it sends a great message to everyone. There's aspects of it where you, you don't stop giving up on yourself. Uh, I think this is something that a lot of guys go through. Um, you know, there's guys in the league who I currently know are going through stuff like that. Um, they're having troubled lives, troubled situations. And anytime I see situations where guys are being inspired to do more and be better, I love stuff like that. So Coach Carter has always been one of my favorite movies. And I think that's probably one of the best movies in terms of watching guys who, you know, most of those guys are hoopers in that movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, what was it like actually playing? Because I know you guys are acting, but I know there's that aspect, like you said, sometimes it's basketball. And when there's hoopers like that, did it ever get intense where you guys are playing and you kind of forget, oh, shit, I'm acting, not hooping? All the time on Sunset Park, because they would have in what we call indie play. And they would just roll the cameras and we just play for like 10 minutes straight, just going at it. And we are, he can't call him. And a lot of that made the movie because it was just like natural moments that they caught. But we all trained, but like they took us to training for like a month. I had a month training before Sunset Park and I had a month training before Coach Carter when we filmed. Now, Coach Carter was a lot more competitive because they went out and got like real sports is they different. That coach, they don't they didn't play. That coach did not play my name was Worm from day one. He called us by our character names. If we was late for practice, and this was a month before we filmed the show, the movie. If we was late for practice, as soon as you got to practice, run. And yeah. he made everybody pay for it. So when everybody gets to talk about, man, y'all did all them pushups and that. When motherfuckers was late, yes, we did. <laughs> he didn't play that. So you got it quick the, after the first week when he didn't care who it was, he Sam Jackson, he, uh-uh, no, uh, everybody run. Like the coach, he was like, he wanted it. He had it so authentic that that's why everybody, so when we started playing these other teams, what happened was I'm a giver. Everybody knows that, you know, so I've seen a lot of my friends, I played in the Drew. So a lot of my mm -hmm. friends, they was like, yo, we need basketball players to come out. And I was like, I got players. So when I went to my Drew game that week, I started telling everybody. So if you go back and look at Coach Carter, a lot of those teams that we was playing against, a lot of Drew League players that you know, like from around here, and I told everybody to come. So it was like, like crazy, like even one of the teams, matter of fact, just about the whole team I recruited end up being the Nova Stars, and I took that team to the Drew, and we won it the first year. That's awesome, <laughs> man. That's awesome. So crazy, but it was a lot of my friends. I was like, you know, they they paying this money, man. Y'all come get this money. All y'all doing is hooping and eating free all day. Yeah. So. When I would see them, we was already we would already battle. So when the gym would be open on lunch, oh, it was open runs. We would play. <laughs> we would play makeup and wardrobe would get mad because we'd be so sweaty. But we'd be like, "You gonna spray us with that water anyway? So <laughs> let's play. We can get sweaty, and then you ain't gotta hit me with that cold water when I've been sitting down for an hour. And now you like, okay, rolling, and they gotta spray us and put grease on us so we look like we've been playing, but we really cold. <laughs> so it was like. So it was like, so yeah, that got intense because everybody on the set actually played. So we went at each other all the time, but it was like brotherly love, but it was still competitive and it was cool. So, and I mean, we shot for four months. So that was like family, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you working with four or 500 people every day for four months straight. That's so cool, man. That's so cool. So that was, a, that was an experience. I never forget it. So OCBL. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, you know this. In every league I run, I don't, I don't always make one team. I make like two, three, four teams. I, I've got a lot of homies. I want to get them all in. Uh, I try and balance the teams. If not, you know, I probably have Marcus, Noah, Yannick, <laughs> all the guys on my team with you and Kamarly, and we'd, we'd be pretty stacked. Yeah, but I like yeah. to balance things, you know, and I always like to put a guy like me and you on a team because when, when, when you have a season, there's guys who are – pissed off with playing time. There's guys who are pissed off with roles. And I think having one of those older guys who just knows the game, puts guys in the right place, yeah. always helps them. And, you know, in the Muslim basketball league, I put you on team with Marcus that first season. And Marcus, like, loved it. He said it was the most fun he had uh, playing wow. basketball. And um, kind of felt like Noah is going to be that guy for you. Uh, I was playing with Noah in another league. 
And, you know, I, I wanted him on my team, but I was like, you know, I, I kind of feel like if I put that group with Antoine and a couple of younger guys, young guys who will listen, that could be something fun. Oh, yeah. And I just told someone recently, I was like, the team I don't want to play right now is Cool Runnings. You know, I know some people might think, oh, this team's better, that team's better. Like, no, man, the, the teams that play together and are gelling, those are teams you don't want to mess with. Those are teams you don't want in the first round elimination game well, playoffs because you guys are gelling right now. So what has it been like playing with that team, you know, being the old man on the team, getting everybody listening to you because they're listening to you and I see it and I know it. Yeah. Yeah. They listening. I got, I got a good group. It just, I got a bunch of nice guys. Yeah. So I don't have no dogs yet. <laughs> I just got a bunch of nice, I got a bunch of nice guys. I think the new addition that we just got, I can't remember his name. Brian. He, Brian. Brian. Yeah. He's solid. So I like him. So that's that's like perfect. You know what I'm saying? And he's a starter anywhere he goes. And then he comes off the bench with us and he's not even tripping. So it's like, you know, but I think I, I think what I'm doing is with with that group. I got a lot of young kids that actually just want to win. So when they see us the first few games, I think they was kind of going back and forth with me. Like, well, wow, don't call a timeout. Why are we doing this? Those games we was losing by two and three points. But it's just, you know, I don't take nothing away from them. They're really good guys. And I actually think I'm probably their biggest fan because they don't see how talented they actually are. It's just certain stuff that I'd be like, I feel like Noah, I feel like nobody in the league can guard him. That's just how I feel. Yeah. I feel like no guard can stay in front of Danny. That's just how I feel. I feel like Danny's too nice. You know what I'm saying? Like he settles a lot. The, like he don't see the fear in the defender's eyes. So when I'm on the bench, I'm like, let me just sit on the bench real quick and watch. So when I see him coming downhill, I'm like, he's strong. He can shoot the three, but that guy is backing up. He's backing up. It's like, he's daring him to shoot and he know he could shoot it. I like, no, he would rather him shoot it. That's what I'm trying to get him to understand. He would rather you shoot it. And then somebody say, oh, that's just a tough shot. Then you keep going and go get 10 layups. But I'm trying to get him to understand it. If you could go and get 10 layups, then now the guy has to back up. Yep. So now you could now you could step into that shot you want to shoot, and now he has to pick his poison because he can do both. You see what I'm saying? He can do both. Noah's big and he's really high IQ. He could you know he could play with everybody. Sammy's my speed strong guy. You know what I'm saying? Just Sammy, you just attack. I just want you to attack. You put so much pressure on the defense. Kevin is a really good role player where he, you know, gets a lot of rebounds, does a lot of dirty work, a lot of stuff that doesn't show up on the stat sheet. You know what I'm saying? So I see a lot of times like he a flash to the basket and catch won't give him the ball. And I'm like, you got to let him touch it because yeah. he's doing all the dirty work for you, but you don't see it. So they, you know, and I think a lot of the younger guys, they equate everything to stats. Yep. They, they equate a whole lot of stuff to stats. And I'm like, I could play in a game and have eight assists and no points, but we won by 14, we won by 15. But I'm, you know, like what I'm trying to get them to understand now is in the, in the OCB, nobody plays, nobody plays defense in transition. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to get them to see. So I'm like, some of these guys are not in that type of shape. You guys are 25, 23 yep. <laughs> or young. <laughs> So what I'm, what I'm trying to get them to do is what our coaches got us to do back in the day. We were taught to fill the lane. You had five running lanes. Everybody used to run that where you, it was a drill. You throw the ball on the backboard, you yep. get it, kick it to the two, that's his shot. You hit the trail, that's his shot. You hit the weak side block, you got the one to cut or you go down and you the, the wings curl under and you hit that. Everybody, everybody got a shot from filling the lanes. It's Lake Show, bro. Yeah, it's regular. It's, it's just show. really simple. Yep. But like this week, I'm yelling, kick it up, kick it up, kick it up. The younger generation, they don't like to kick the ball up. They like to dribble, dribble. When you come, then they kick it. Yep. But when they play pro, you're not taught that. Yep. At the pro level, you have to kick the ball and move without the ball. You're going to score more points without the ball than you are with the ball. So I try to get some of the youngs like, just kick it to me. But I know what it is, is when they playing in these new open gyms, when they kick the ball up, somebody just takes the first shot. Yep. 
So they never out. see it. So they never run and cut through and get the extra the give and go. They never get that. They never get that far because in their game, when you kick it up, the first shot, they just shoot it. That's the first available shot, which would be a horrible shot. So even if you make it, then they like, but I'm cooking. Yeah, today you're just making bad shots. <laughs> but it's not, you know, but we can't win like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I say you have to be selfish in order to be selfish. And what I mean by that is, let's just say somebody kicked the ball up to me three or four times and I'm wide open on the wing and I know I can knock that shot down 80% of the time. But if he kicked it up to me and he cuts, I'm going to give it back to him, let him go get a layup. If he does that two or three times, then what happens is the fourth, fifth, and sixth time when he kick it up to me and he cuts through, my man is going to go help with his because he's going through. Now I could take my time and take this shot wide open. It's not rushed. Then I got rebounders in position where we get, you know, if I miss, we get a loose ball or something, you know, and now I could get my three threes. I don't have to be a high volume shooter to still average 20 a game. I don't have to do that. If I hit three shots a half and they all threes, that's 18 a game. I've done more than you have when you took 20 shots to get 20 points. You see what I'm saying? So it's just like, and then I'm efficient because I have assists along with it. I have, you know, pick and rolls or pick and pop that led to an extra pass. And that what the younger kids on my team don't get yet is this is the stuff that if you want to go play at the next level, this is what the coaches are looking at. They want to see, okay, that didn't happen for you. But will you make that extra pass? Because when we put a play in, we're going to put a knockdown shooter in that position. But we want to see if you're going to be able to find him every time, if that play works. But, you know, they don't get it. So it's just like, and me, I'm I'm a big feed the fire guy. Yep. If this dude got 40, he should have 80. And we don't need to score. Until the defense switches, that's on them. If they don't adjust, we don't adjust. We go at him every single time until they do something else. That's just me. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to score. I score when it's a W and that win call. You know, and I tell the team, I know everybody makes the playoffs, but we could do good. I just told them, we're, you know, I think they was a little frustrated after the first couple of games, but I'm like, we're going to be fine. We're going to, we're going to be fine. That team is going to be fine. Cause they finally start in the jail. They finally start, you know what I'm saying? I took myself out of the, you know what I'm saying? I took myself out of the lineup just so I could kind of see stuff and let them do their thing and then say, okay, cool. Then I'll fill in and help out where it need to be. You know what I'm saying? I can help us calm down and stuff like that because we are young. My team is very young. Everybody's in their twenties, <laughs> just about everybody's in their twenties. So they could still jump. They could still run fast. They could still do this. So they, you know, they relying on a lot of the athletic, athletically gifted stuff that they have. I don't have that no more. You know, yeah. mine is all IQ, you know, that's it. But I can still do my thing. You know, I'm going to give you a glimpse of this here or there, but I think that cool runners team is just going to be fine. Like I yeah. said, with the new addition with Ryan, we're going to be cool. I'm, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not worried about them because when, when, when the time comes, they're going to be okay. You guys are actually probably my favorite team to watch right now. Um, uh, the first couple of games was rough, but uh, your your guys' game is always the one I'm kind of paying a little more attention with. Um, I love the way everybody's playing. I love the way everyone's trusting each other. I love the extra passes. I love the ability that you guys have with that many shooters, that many guys that could run the floor at that speed. Uh, and then, of course, Noah. Uh, yeah, you're just talking about Noah plays transition defense. And then there's Noah for that chase down block. Yeah. You know, but see what, I, what I'm trying to get Noah to do is I'm like, Noah, he can handle the ball. And I know he wants to bring it up, but I'm like, nobody's literally guarding you. If we get the rebound or somebody takes it out and Noah just runs straight down the middle of the court and feels a strong side or weak side block. If he just runs straight down the middle of the court over the top, cause nobody, everybody's looking this way. They can't even see you passing. So I'm like, I'm looking at the guards, like, kick it up like over the top yeah, yeah. he's wide open that's what like, i do with marcus yeah, same thing go. i do with marcus yeah yeah exactly yeah. that that was same thing i did with him with marcus no just run down the middle of the court yeah. nobody's even watching you bro just i'm throwing it right over the top just go score just yeah. we don't need to come down set it up and go to the block and get we yeah. don't need to do none of that all get we need the to easiest really two points lanes. you're gonna get that night fill the lanes if we fill the lanes we're up 16 quick because by the time they don't know what hit them now we got a cushion in case they start hitting shots. Yeah. Happened to us last week. We had a cushion. We went up like 19 or 20 some points 
and they caught right back up. It was like a four point game because we started coming down, taking quick shots, taking quick shots. We stopped filling the lanes, but if we have that two, we have that three, we have that four, we have that five and the points bringing it up. When that five is running the court, just over the top. Those are easy, easy transition buckets, which would easily kill a team, easily kill a team. And they just looking at us going, and I'm like, we should, we let these teams stay close. Because yeah. they don't play defense. And, and even when we move the ball, pick and roll, you get down in the lane, you don't have to force it. Kick it. Get that extra pass. You kick it there, and you kick it there. And he kick it back, nobody's guarding it. They irritated by that time. Now you just shooting a wide open shot. It's like we make the game easy. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm trying to get them to understand. Like, I'm their biggest fan, really, because I think the, a lot of the cats on my team, they don't know how good they actually are. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes yes. they might think they better than they are, but they actually, sometimes they are. But IQ wise, everybody ain't there yet because they don't see it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to get them to see it. Like, just trust me, if you, it becomes contagious, just like this person is hitting a shot, it becomes contagious to make an extra pass. It becomes contagious because you're trying to get in the lane and go, oh, look at what I found. It feels just the same to make him to draw two and drop it off and he hit a layup. And by the time you look around, you be like, I don't even got no points. But you still feel a part of the game because you feel like you, you have something to do with those buckets that y'all was getting instead of you just coming down and you have to do it yourself. So once I could get them to understand that, I think that team is going to be so dangerous. Yep, I agree. Be so dangerous. I um, So you played overseas, so you get this. And I try and tell kids especially this a lot. Even some of the older guys, they don't get this because in the Americas, so many people are athletically gifted, but in Europe, especially Europe, they're teaching these basic things. Everything you just talked about, like I go over there and I watch. Um, so they have 10 U, 12 U, 15 U, 17 U, 18 U and up. And you go watch 10 and 12 U. If you see the way these guys are moving the ball, you know, yeah. like draft night, you know, they, oh, they draft a European guy. Like, yeah, he averaged eight points, three rebounds this and that and they're like dude you, you didn't do anything I'm like no you don't get it no one on the team averaged more than 15 that's how they play that's everyone's they play. moving everybody's getting the yeah. ball and most people don't get that making that extra play making the correct play getting right. making sure everybody else is involved things like that and kids over there are taught that and so a lot of these guys think they're gonna play over here dominate go over there do the same thing and and they average eight points when they get over there. I know two players, Sean Marshall and Larry Gordon. You know, LG play with us. Play. I bought both of them to the Drew, but they had never played in the Drew before. I bought them like Larry was right out of Pomona, and uh, what you call it was right out of Boston College. Sean you know, Marshall, yeah. Sean Marshall was right out of Boston College. But when they came, them guys made 350, 375 a year for 10, 12 years over there, averaging six points, seven, eight yep. points a game. Never ever dominate. Yeah, over here they average 30, easy. But over yeah. there they average six to eight points, but they could take care of their family. Yep. And they millionaires now taking care of their family playing basketball because they're playing correctly. They yeah. do the Sean, little Sean Marshall. Sean Marshall came and played with me in the league, uh, on the Tuesday night league with my buddy Danny Cavage. And Sean Marshall played one game and he, he had, I think, like 56 points and was the most effortless 56 points I've ever oh, seen. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. Sean, yeah, Sean is a monster. Just, yeah, basic simple fundamental basketball just you wouldn't have known he had it but just kept filling it up man just doing it the right way and i love seeing that oh yeah no he's he's and that's when he could jump like crazy he still plays with me in a 35 and over yeah you oh, know, this was recent man this is this was a couple yeah, weeks ago he did this yeah yeah he so that, but he's so fundamentally sound and he does all the right, the right stuff, footwork and that's what a lot of the young kids don't get so that's why i'm like trying to tell them like it's so many players that I played against in the Drew that were so good. But I think what it is, is a lot of the younger kids, they follow the influencers now. Yeah. So they see the influence behind the back hitting the three, but they don't realize that that dude had to learn all the fundamental stuff in order to do that. He had to master the fundamental in order to be able to alter it. But that's the, that's the problem that they don't get because you say, okay, cool. Well, well what did they do when they played in uh, like, I'm not a great, street ball player but put me in a system it's hard to guard me in a system because i'm going to read the offense and take what the defense give me i'm it's hard to guard me in the offense if it, it especially if i'm not handling the ball 
Oh, it's easy. I'm a score. I could score without the ball because I know how to move. That's an art. And that's what I try to get like ace and some of the other ones that do like, look, Sammy, if you just run the court, bro, you're going to see the ball 10 times. If you get five layups, you still average double figures a yep. game. Like you, you will still get the stats, but I had to tell them like, it's all about stats with the younger generation because they don't know, they're not fundamentally sound. But I, uh, OG told me this one time, Tony Delk, she played Kentucky, you know, Tony Delk. Of course. Worked out with him. He was like, and I was still in high school. And he was like, Twan, listen to me, listen to me. He said, how many points you think you want to average a game? So at that, I'm a kid, 20. Okay, cool. You know how easy it is to get 20? I said, nah, it's actually been tough. He said, but you could, you're a knockdown shooter and you can make free throws, right? He said, and you like, you you run. He said, I ran the floor a lot, you know what I'm saying? Cause I was real fast back then and I was in top, top, top shape. So he said, all you need is a three and a layup each quarter. That's five points. He said, that's 20 points a game. He said, you need to make two shots a quarter. And I was like, he said, so ain't no, all oh, the coach don't play me. I need to play six out of the eight minutes each quarter in high school to get my 20. He said, if you come in and you run the offense and you get this open look, how many times do you think you're going to knock this shot down? And I was like, I, I'm not missing that. Sure enough, he was like, that gives you 20 a game. And I was like, damn, okay. So I, st- I had to start looking at it like that. When the coach subbed me in and I'm going in for my two or three minutes, I could still get just as many points as this dude. And that's what I had to explain to Roderick Taylor. Uh, Roderick played with us in the ABA in one game. He had like 29, but I had 27. But I didn't play that much. You know, I probably played 16 minutes the whole game. It was like four minute, you know, 12 minute quarters in the ABA. But when I got in the game, I got my look, you know, my three points. I ended up it had like two threes in the first in the first half because we we run in plays. So I'm coming off a double screen, hit my two threes. A couple minutes later, coach stub. Yeah, I got me. All right, cool. I went and sat down. But I had two threes every quarter, and then I had shot a couple fouls. You know, a couple. You know, when we was in the bonus, I hit a couple free throws. So after the game, he was like, "Yo, Twan, I got player of the game, and I had 29. Man, what you had? Probably about like six or something like that. Like." You did good when you came in off the bench. I said, oh, no, I had 27. He's like, no way you had 27. I was like, yeah. But he was like, you barely played. I'm like, yeah, but the difference is now coaches is going to come say, well, okay, well, who is this kid averaging 29? But they're going to look at your stat. You was 12 for 26 from the field. You played 36 minutes. I played 16 minutes and got 27. And I'm 8 for 10 from the field. I'm more efficient than you. So on paper, they're going to say, well, who the hell is this kid? Then who is this dude that's just put, that's a volume shooter. You don't have to be a volume shooter. You just got to be able to make the correct basketball plays on a consistent basis to get wins. That's it. That's all. And then he was like, damn, ah, man, that's crazy that you broke that down like that. I said, yeah, but you shooting every time you got to touch it. You mad because you're not getting your looks. I'm going to get the open looks and I'm going to take the correct shot. That's it. I'm not, I'm not forcing nothing. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to, but of, of course it comes with age. You know what I'm saying? You learn it. So, you go. so the young ones, but, I, but once I could reach one of them young ones and he goes, it clicks in and be way better players than they are now. Yeah. They wonder why they, they, at the, they, at the, um, So, you know, no, this dude is coming to my house. Okay, cool. I'm going to send them. Damn, I'm going to have to work right now. No worries, no worries. We, we can finish up, Antoine. I know you got stuff to do, you busy guy. So uh, there's something I do end of every episode. I'm going to ask for your top NBA players all time. All time? How many? Yep. Ten. Top ten. Okay, you got to go with Jordan. That's the GOAT. Got to go with Kobe. Got to go with, uh, got to give magic. Got to put magic in there. That's for sure. Um, I think everybody got a different top 10 because everybody wasn't around to see that generation play. But Shaq, monster. Kim Olajuwon, monster. Um, 
man, it, it's, it's too many that's that's so good, that's so great. Isaiah Thomas was a savage, Clyde Drexler, Carl Malone, Charles Barkley, all of the, you know, I said those are just that generation, but it's you know, I can't leave out LeBron because he's gonna be the you know, he's gonna be the the next go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have LeBron in there, but you still can't forget D Wade. You, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just too many. I like um Steph. Yeah, MJ, Kobe, Magic, LeBron, Hakeem, Shaq, Isaiah Thomas, Carl Malone, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight so far. Oh, oh you said Steph, Barkley too. Yeah, Steph gonna be in there. So Steph would be 10. Yeah, Steph, he changed the game. Okay. He changed the game. So you you know, but I mean I left out so many greats. Like I think Paul Pierce was is up there. I think KG is up there. You know what I'm saying? Like it's too. I didn't say KG a might be one of the most underrated guys. Underrated, yeah. KG oh is KG is super savage. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people forget about those guys. Like even Gilbert Arenas and like it was some hogs in the league. <laughs> it was some hogs in the league. It just. I, the new generation, they only see LeBron and they try to compare him to Mike, but you like Mike shot 50 something percent from the field. And every time he got there, he won. Yep. Yep. He didn't just go and not win. He closed the deal when he got there. Kobe, no, just, Kobe, just to, just for those kids, those time are all 90s and I think 2000s he lost guys. one time when he got there. Yeah. No, no. 2000s and uh, yeah, 90s guys, yeah, man. 90s, those, that's, they, that, that's, that's my they, shit they, too, man. They, Yeah, they didn't see Clyde Drexler. They didn't see, like I said, they didn't see Chris Webber and like, you know, all of them yep. dudes, like even like some of the greater shooters like Bibby and um, they didn't see Stoyakovich and, and Vlade was one of them cold dudes that don't like under, they was underrated. You know what I'm saying? But Imagine that Sacramento team in today's basketball where they don't really have to play defense. Yeah, or, or you know who I don't think they give no props to? Petrovic, rest in oh, peace. Yeah. And they don't give love to Sabonis like they yep. should. Oh my God, yeah. Yeah, because Sabonis was a man. Yeah. I used to watch that dude. I used to be like, he's that big and he does all of that. Yeah. His son don't hold a candle to what he's doing. His son is actually really good. Yeah. But his son don't hold a candle. Like his basketball mind was so. Yeah. His son doesn't have his IQ. He's a no. great physical athlete and has pretty good fundamentals, but he doesn't have that basketball IQ that Sabonis has. Uh, like, I can't leave off. I mean, you know, you, you got to do 20 because you got a name like Steve Nash and, you know what I'm saying, Mari Stoudemire and all those guys was good. Like, them dudes was just, big. Let's just stick to this. 90s and 2000s. That was the shit. Yeah, yeah, 90s and yeah. 2000s. I'm good with that, too. I'm good with that, too. <laughs> you got some good ones. I think the John Morant kid is going to be one. Oh, I like him too. Yeah, I think he gonna be one. He already won. I just I, hope he doesn't get hurt. He's yeah, that, I can't, that kind of player where like, uh like I'm I didn't even every mention, time it's the floor. It, it, it's tough because I can't mention KD. I can't mention Kyrie. I can't. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's tough because I come from that generation, and that generation had ten alone. Yeah, twenty alone. So yep. KD and them is just the new generation. So I wouldn't yep. say greatest, but they damn show sure are, are up there true hall of famers like no no question katie's one of the best to ever do it to ever touch the ball like you know and i, I like i've been a basketball fan since a kid but i'm from chicago i saw jordan i saw you know what i'm saying i saw pippen i didn't even mention pippen and he's definitely up there you know what i'm saying but like those dream teams they didn't struggle with them teams overseas they beat everybody by six some of these teams that we got now we barely win in game but the game has evolved too so the other countries are catching up yep because they're getting, you know, they're getting different players and that athleticism is, that's where we, I think we still a little bit above the, 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 the threshold right there. But some of them other countries are actually catching up. So it's like, oh shit, here we go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Especially like when Baron Davis and them lost, that was, when they yeah. lost, that was just like, what the, like, you know, that let you know the world is catching up. Yeah. Tim Duncan, Baron Davis, Allen Iverson, LeBron, um, forgot who also KG was on that team. I the way they lost was just there's names there they shouldn't have. Yeah, Vince Carter they, and all that. Yeah, they, that 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 was brutal. But but when you when you put back when you put Kobe and LeBron and D Wade and all them together and Vince and when you put all of them together, then all of a sudden you know because Chris Paul is one of my like favorite point guards. Period. Me too. Me too. And 
I ain't he ain't on the list of the team yeah. because he's just a newer generation, but he's definitely one of the top of greatest of all time to me. IQ like through the roof, through the ceiling, that dude can play flat out. You know what I'm saying? But it's like you, I don't know. The game just it, it just done evolved. It, it done evolved. But when it kept, but when you put that new group together, they had that old school mentality. Yeah. We are the USA. We don't take none of that. We go beat everybody by 50. And I think that with the newer generation, they was more cool yeah. with beating them. They felt like we already won. Yep. So because we from the USA, I think they went in there with that swagger, like we already won. And they didn't understand that they want to beat us so bad that they going at, at their throat. But Jordan and them took no prisoners. Nope. No, they coming at us heavy. So we we start playing right now. And they key, and I think with the older generation, they keyed everything on defense. The new generation keyed everything on offense. Yep. Because they they, you know, like I said, Steph and Katie didn't Kyrie, they done changed the game. It's a lot of one-on-one, tough making tough shots, no extra passes, you know. You it's your turn, it's your turn, it's your turn, because they so gifted to do it one-on-one. But when Jordan and them was playing, when Kobe took that team, when him and LeBron got into it, and after that, LeBron started making all defensive team and all defense because he was like, man, y'all play too much. Yeah. We got to take care of business. The job is not done. Kobe came in with that mentality because he was also under Mike and Mike was in his ear. Like, no, nah, y'all play too much. You'll never be great if, if, if you that nice. You can't be nice. You got to be an asshole at some point. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like. That's just what it is. And Mike them instill that. You you hear Charles Barkley on TNT all the time. He too nice. He don't like Embiid because he too, he's shooting jumpers. He The dude can't guard you. Why are you letting him off the hook? Same thing I'll be saying about Danny. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's too, you too nice. You know what I'm saying? So they had that different mentality to where they wasn't about to be embarrassed. Yeah. And now the, the newer kids is just like, okay, let me see how much I can score. Let me see them. You know what I'm saying? So that's the, the generation. But I think they, the USA, they, they starting to see it. So they, they coming, they coming back. They getting it back together. But we did struggle a couple of times last, last Olympics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> playing against Africa because they got NBA players playing on their teams yep. now. But we didn't just blow everybody out. We was losing a few of them games and had to literally come back and win. But, but Mike Nim, Dream Team One and Dream Team Two, all blowouts. Yeah, <laughs> it was the go. Sure. No for the rest of the world, it's different because those Olympics are what they're playing for the entire time they're not playing for it. Yep. Whereas mm -hmm. for here, we have the NBA. You know, that's the most important. Olympics is something on the side. You have a choice where you get play, get to play or not. Yeah. Those are the guys, that's, it means so much more to them. So it is different for them. Yeah, you're right. All right, Antoine. I appreciate this, man. It was a great interview, man. I, ho I hope all the kids listen to this one because it's a great one for them to learn from. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's good. And then Cool yeah. Runners, baby. We're going to beat it. We're going to see Cool Runners up in that thing. I hope I don't see you guys in the first round of the playoffs. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to coach us to victory. <laughs> <laughs> On or off the court. If I can help, I'm going to help. If I can't, I'm going to let them do it. <laughs> well, I'm do. definitely definitely glad I put you in charge of that team. Uh, you're, you're, I think you're a little better with kids than I am because I, I can be a little more of an a-hole. And uh, most of the times, kids don't want to deal with it and they quit. So, I'm a little better dealing with uh, older egos at this point. So I'm working on that with my team. <laughs> no, they, they ain't going to quit. Like I said, I got a, I got a good group. I just need them to be a little bit more unselfish. And I'm not saying that they selfish now. They, they, they've gotten a lot more unselfish, but even a little bit more, we beating everybody by 30. Guaranteed. We got too many weapons. We got too many weapons. It'd like be, I said, man. 12, 13 points a game. It won't be – I hate teams where one person averaged 30 and everybody else averaged three. Like, yeah. that's – I hate teams like that. Give me five – give me five players that get eight a game, ten a game. It makes it so hard for somebody else to guard you. So, they're like, damn, who got him? And we've been losing players. As soon as I feel like we get a good groove, oh, I'm hurt. Oh, I can't come. Oh, I can't. And I'm like, damn, I had plans for him this week. I didn't <laughs> want to play that much, <laughs> but I got to do it. So it's all good. But yeah. You're doing so a great I'll job, man. You Sunday, brother. All right, buddy. Thank you again all so right. much. I appreciate it, man. Hold out. All right, bud. Take care. All right.